Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews and today we're looking at the BenQ SW271. This is a 27 inch 4K 10 bit HDR professional color work panel. As a hobby photographer and also filmmaker for YouTube of course, I needed a monitor that would give me really good and accurate results. Now, Granted, for video work, you can just use scopes to get the correct image, but having that ability to see if the image is good yourself instead of relying on scopes is of course crucial. The SW271 comes in this giant box and the first thing you'll notice is the color calibration report from the factory. Now obviously you'll have to do your own color calibration afterwards, but this is a nice bonus. The display comes with HDMI, mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort and a USB pass-through cable. Strangely enough, there is no straight DisplayPort cable included. The monitor has a very simple look to it. Bezels are small and the front buttons aren't too eye-catching. Around the back you'll find dual HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4, USB-C and an audio out. I really like that the monitor has the power supply built in because it makes your desk look cleaner because there's no adapters, but sadly the USB-C port won't power your MacBook or your Ultrabook, so you'll still need separate power for your laptop. On the left side of the monitor there's an SD card reader and dual USB 3.0 ports. I really like how fast the SD card reader is and the USB 3 ports are awesome to hook up your wireless mouse dongle and your color calibration tool. This monitor also comes with built-in speakers, but they're not great. The SW271 cares about your posture and your neck and your comfort in general, which is awesome. Thumbs up there, BenQ. That means the stand is massive and at 16.4 kilograms, this is not a lightweight monitor, but the stand offers all the functionality, all the adjustments that you could possibly want. You have height adjust, you have swivel without moving the base, you have tilt, and you can of course also rotate it into portrait mode in case you're doing portrait work. The stand of course also comes with a handy hole in the rear to route your cables through and at the top there's a handle so if you do have to move it around you can easily do that as well. This monitor comes with two hoods so right now mine is in landscape mode and you can also have a hood in portrait mode which is awesome and both of these hoods have a little slidey thingy at the top so you can drop your calibration tool through there. That's a little feature that I really like. Now while the panels themselves have this really nice cloth coating to them um, the plastic joints are a little bit reflective, so that's a bit distracting. I really wish BenQ could use that new ultra black paint, for example. Let's talk about the panel itself now. So as I said, it's an ultra high definition, so TE840 by 2160, 27 inch IPS model. It's only 60 hertz refresh rate, so if you're a gamer, you might want to look elsewhere. The 10-bit panel comes with an anti-glare coating and it covers 99% of Adobe's RGB color space but 100% of Rec. 709, sRGB and 93% of DCI-P3. And this monitor is also Technicolor certified. Now this monitor was one of the first HDR monitors and that means there were no standards back then. A few weeks ago we had our first HDR standards and so at only 350 nits of maximum brightness this isn't like true HDR but it does do some HDR it's just you know only 350 nits bright which right now as you can see is not very bright for this monitor. Now in this video I've already mentioned calibration a few times because this monitor has hardware calibration. This means that you can actually configure the monitor itself instead of creating an ICC profile in Windows. And this hardware calibration is really easy. You just hook up that data color or your X-Rite color meter into the panel itself, run the little software app and everything is calibrated for your liking. Now in case you want to mess around with settings manually, there are of course buttons on the front panel, but BenQ also includes this super handy hotkey puck, like it's really a handy way to navigate the on-screen display. On here are four programmable buttons, so you can just set them to color profiles with just one press of a button you switch color profiles instead of going through the menu. It also comes with a little d-pad so you can still navigate the menu and set stuff up using the hotkey puck. A few really cool features that are in the on-screen display are picture by picture and picture in picture. And this is awesome to, for example, show the same image twice left and right side but with a different color profile applied to each one of them. So if you're exporting in Rec. 709 and in sRGB you can see the difference 
side by side, which is really handy. This monitor comes with Adobe RGB, sRGB, black and white, Rec. 709, DCI-P3, HDR, DICOM and darkroom presets. You can then also add three calibration profiles and another two custom profiles. Moving to image quality then. The image is very sharp being 4K 27 inch, backlight bleed is almost non-existent and ghosting is kept to what you would expect from an IPS panel, again this is not really for gamers. Colors are accurate to a delta E of less than 2 all over the panel, that's awesome, you know the color consistency is really good with this one. With a contrast of only 1000 to 1, you may expect the blacks to not be as good but they're actually really black, really consistent throughout the panel once again, you know colors are very consistent with this panel. And also they don't show this weird grey tone to them, they're actually black, although not to the level of an OLED. Overall the image on this display looks great, it's very sharp and vivid but in a natural realistic way. Color uniformity is excellent like you would expect of course from a panel in this price class. Now I saw a lot of reviewers already review this panel with consumer grade graphics cards and those don't put out real 10 bit except Nvidia does it in DirectX but not in OpenGL so when you're doing Photoshop, Premiere Pro, that sort of stuff you only get 8 bit color. Now I could have gone and bought a Quadro card but those are even more ridiculously expensive than consumer grade graphics cards so I actually just installed a Linux and modified the driver to get 10 bit and you know you really get a massive benefit from that. The gradients look way better in 10 bit compared to 8 bit. So up on my wish list now is a Quadro graphics card. So to conclude my review then of the BenQ SW27-1. I'm super stoked on it and I want to say a massive thanks to BenQ for actually sending me this panel although that in no way actually influences my opinion on it so I'm not you know lying about the qualities of it. It really is a really good monitor although at 1100 euros it's pretty expensive. I feel like this panel offers way more features and way higher quality than what I would need for the sort of work that I do but I can really see professionals use this one to its fullest extent. The best thing is of course just how realistic the colors look but also very important is of course that hardware monitor calibration, having all those preset profiles and of course that really fast SD card reader on the side although if I'm really going to nitpick on something I would like it more to the side so that it's easier to access. The inclusion of the hotkey puck really makes it super easy to navigate the monitor menus and the stand with all its adjustability is awesome. Anyway guys thank you very much for watching this video, if you liked it hit that like button, hit the subscribe button so you'll get a new video next week although I have no idea what it will be about yet. If you want more frequent updates though there is Instagram and Twitter linked below next to the Patreon link so you can support the channel like the awesome people on your screen right now. For now massive thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.